Hi all, my name is Mason. I use him pronouns. I'm the program director for the Institute for Social Ecology, which is a radical popular education organization. It's been doing uh, education work and social movements for about 50 years. Uh, I'm based in Detroit, Michigan right now, although about to move back home to the Pacific Northwest. Check. All right, and not represented here is Eleanor Finley, um, who is a municipalist educator uh, and, you know, has um, supported us with some case study research and other things. Uh, so with that, um, we are inviting uh, you all to to drop into the chat when your region is called. And Yvonne has always keeping us on our toes. So this is a different region map than last time. And I cannot necessarily see the regions. <laughs> so... Um, this is North America. Last time we almost started uh, a war because I only had a map of the U.S. So, sorry. Okay. All right. So then I'm just going to um, hodgepodge the regions from west to east. Um, but, you know, I will kick it off with um, anyone from Canada. Just feel free to drop into the chat uh, your um, your introductions. Um, your name, any preferred pronouns, any affiliations, um, any location. So anyone representing Canada here, drop into the chat that you are here. And if Canada is not here today, that's all good. We know that they are out there and we you can let them know that we called on them. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and, oh, wait, is there some Canada coming in? Okay. Um, we've got uh, Zan on the unceded Algonquin Territory, Ottawa, um, Saida, uh, she, her, in Kingston, Katarakwi. Uh It takes a while to type. Thank you very much. So we 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 want to want to slow down and make sure that we are aware that folks from Canada were getting themselves in. So welcome, Canada. Uh, let's start with folks on the western U.S. coast. Um, anyone from coming out off of the the western coast? Feel free to drop into the chat. All right, we got Jason out of Los Angeles, Tongoland. Thank you. G in um, Chinoquinland, Portland. Oh, Jay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, Lulu from Unseated uh, Weatland. Mia, um, also on Tongva land, Indini and Tongva. Oh, we're still in the West, Juji. <laughs> so we'll come, we'll, we'll come slowly east. We're, we're doing regional introductions. Um, thank you, <clears throat> Cameron and Cachet. Thank you for those folks from the West. Let's um, shift slowly into maybe um, mountain region, mountain time zone, if you're somewhere in there. Um, anyone in those mountain regions? Yep. And you all are doing the other thing, which is that if you see somebody in the chat that just want to, you know, tap into, you can see who's there too. Anyone in the mountain time zone still uh, holding fast there? Okay, and if not, we'll shift over to the central time zone. We'll just go right around from both, you know, if you're in the Midwest region, if you're in some of those southeastern regions that are in central, uh, let's um, welcome you in.
All right. Uh, there we go. There's uh, Melissa, Cherokee Land, Cherokee, Cherokee Chickasaw. Thank you. Anyone else in that central time zone, Midwest to Southeast, where you are? All right, Jeremy and Comanche land. All right, and Nick and Cherokee Chickasaw land. All right, keep them coming central. We will now go ahead and pivot all, all the way east. Um, so if you are in east, whether it's in the upper east coast, um, on, on down into the southeast corners, um, why don't you all drop in? All right, there's uh, Theron out of Pittsburgh. And there's Juji again, it's all good Juji. Jasmine and Lenape Hokinland. Alejandra out at Penn State University. Currently in Ecuador. And Cheyenne. All right. Out of Lenape Hokin. Allison out of Ciudad, Ciudad de Puerto Rico. Lincoln Land. Uh, Gregory out of Wampanoag, Narragansett. John and Seneca Territory, Lana, Andrea and Lenape Lands. Okay. And yeah, so we we have us we we've gathered a sense from the chat um who who's in here and and um with all of those eastern pieces coming in. We see there's lots of folks um from that that east coast. So uh, thank you all for dropping in. And with that, oh, okay. Don't forget. And if 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 there's if Mexico is here, is there anyone from Mexico that we have uh, have left out? Or well, the Caribbean. Thank you very much, Jay. <laughs> Mexico or the Caribbean? Are you representing in? Oh, okay. Well, there, there we go. Allison was was dropping in um, from the Caribbean. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, keep on bringing those those intros into the chat, um, and you know we'll keep trying to, to assess uh, who all is here, you know, who are going to be there at the, the Municipalism Learning Jam, uh, reviewing the, that agenda again for folks who didn't see it in the chat earlier. Um, we are doing, um, we've done, done our introductions, both of ourselves, and then had you all do some chat intros. We are reviewing this agenda now. We'll go ahead and give an overview of the fellowship um, next, and then we will go ahead and pivot to some Q&A space. Um, so that you can ask questions that may not have been answered by the presentation. We'll do a little bit of next steps to talk about where we are in uh, recruiting for the cohort. And then we'll do some one word checkouts um, at the end. So that is um, where we are going next. And now we're on to municipalism learning series. Um, so in terms of how this uh, this particular learning series started. We um, have had the Municipalist Moment uh, webinar series um, that happened back in May of 2022. Um, you know, it was a really you know really good launch for the series. There was um, you know a lot of a lot of energy and you know some some in person meetups in addition to the virtual space. Um, you know, one of the things that came out of that particular webinar, um, you know, was that there was something some some elements of it that were pretty academic um you know and that there were some folks who wanted a little bit more practical engagement with you know how municipalist organizing might look um or might feel or might work um so you know from that that initial webinar drawing over a thousand folks and having those viewing parties um four of us started to meet in november of 2022 to think about um yeah we'll talk about where you can access the webinar series um you know 
later, but you know, municipalism.org. There we go. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, but four of us started to meet in uh, November 2022 to plan um, a series to think about how we could um, draw out some of those practical elements of municipalism and bring them to folks who were organizing, um, who, are, who were organizing their communities and wanted to use this framework or engage with this framework as a part of their organizing. So what we're hoping for the Municipalist Fellowship is a, a space that's going to support some reflection, some experimentation, um, engage with some, some new projects that folks are currently working on, some space for skill dis development, some space for some individual, you know, applied research, um, and and ultimately trying to prioritize, you know, folks in the global majority and get essentially bring new voices into the municipalism space um, that you know, in in our mind or that in our experience are organizing around municipalism, but maybe are not necessarily calling it that that particular term. And, you know, maybe there's some analysis that's missing um, that, you know, this this um, framework could engage. So the fellows are going to be meeting over six sessions. Um, so it's a, it's a biweekly meetup. So there will be alternating Saturday uh, meets. Um, and hopefully out of that, you know, folks will produce a municipalist organizers toolkit that will allow for those ideas um, that are expressed inside of the fellowship to show up um, more broadly in the municipalism space. Uh, some of the, the projects that we had initially um, looked at as we were examining, you know, where is this particular framework happening? Um, Cooperation Tulsa, LA Tenants Union, Casa Pueblo, Symbiosis PDX. Um, so these are some, you know, this is not necessarily a comprehensive list of folks that are engaging in this way, but these are some that we were engaging as we were trying to think about um, case research, as we were trying to think about, you know, studies that could come into the fellowship uh, in some of the sessions. And so this is what ideally will, you know, be the shape of what this municipalism learning series will be. And in terms of some of the guiding elements of the, the fellowship and the curriculum, we are, you know, one guided by some elements of the PMA handbook, the People's Movement Assembly handbook. So where it talks about its principles, governance, convergence, frontline social movement, recognize that People's Movement Assembly is a very specific framework and a very specific practice um, for regional assemblies. But there are lots of elements in there that, you know, eat, that help people to ground in just what is good assembly pr process and practice uh, and be able to engage there. So we're using a lot of elements of the PMA handbook as a part of this and a lot of the principles there. But we're also grounding in the framework of popular education. And so those that popular education spiral, um, starting with the experience and knowledge of participants and being able to kind of share, shape and share their stories into the space, um, identifying patterns from the folks who are in the room, from the stories that are told, um, perhaps adding some new information about municipalism or even kind of drawing on the the um, new information that folks might bring into the room. So there's a, you know, um, important student learner, you know, student teacher dynamic there. Um, practicing skills that they might use in their own organizing and then ultimately really applying what's been learned in the world and hopefully bringing some of that research and some of that learning back right back into the fellowship so that, you know, all throughout this process, we're recognizing that everybody has something something to, to learn. Everyone has something to share. And so we're, we're doing both in the context of this uh, fellowship. And in terms of some of the the sessions that we'll have going on. Um, so we, for, for the curriculum, for these six sessions, we're starting in the space of decoding municipalism. And that is where we just try to draw on some of the historical readings or historical um, writings about municipalism, both those that, that currently fall under that framework, but maybe there are other elements or other practices of indigenous governance that we might also engage in and unpack as we're thinking about the history of municipalism. Uh, we want to shift from there to just doing local power analysis. How do you do a landscape assessment um, of the place where you live and think about the, the forms of both tra traditional and non-traditional power that are represented there uh, as you as you try to engage um, with, you know, with, with mapping out a municipalist organizing strategy. Um, there are some sessions on base building or a session on base building where we talk about the relationship of grassroots and door-to-door -door organizing with the municipalist um, framework and building power through that framework. We'll have a space for popular assemblies where we will think about and, and both you know strategize around the use of the people's assembly and popular assemblies and engage a lot of the, um, the framework of the People's Movement Assembly Handbook in, in this process. 
you know, both from a facilitation standpoint, from synthesizing the ideas that come out of the assembly, uh, there's space for thinking about pathways to power. So how to develop a, a municipalist organizing strategy and also how to retool it um, once you you find that maybe there's some elements of it that aren't working. Um, for this, we we have engaged, you know, with uh, Jackson Kush strategy and then other strategies that might help us to understand here's how the strategy originally looked. Here's, you know, the current conditions and here's how the strategy had to evolve and change. So during during that pathways to power, we hope to help people think about how they're evolving their strategies. And then finally, practicing governance where we um, shift from a dynamic of just, you know, we, we recognize that this this particular fellowship is a limited space. And so out of that limited space, we want to cultivate a community of practice so, so that folks can go off and be able to um, continue learning from one another and not necessarily needing it to be convened or organized by anything that we're doing, but, you know, folks being able to understand how they might build their own community of practice around municipalism, whether it's in their local context or if it's in a larger geographic context, you know, that, that those fellows continue meeting. So those are a few elements of the sessions that we have planned. And with that, I'm going to um, pivot or pitch it to you, Mason, I think. Well, I think you, you covered what the sessions are about um, pretty thoroughly. The first one is just trying to make sure we're all on the same page of terminology we're using, get a sense of what the big debates are um, that we'll be sorting through and trying to make sense of for our own organizing contacts. Uh, next slide. Um, and so for this um, power mapping session, we're um, really just kind of is intending to ground all participants in um, running through this program with their own organizing context in mind. So each of the sessions, two, three, four, five, are going to be organized around exercises of, um, kind of developing our strategic thinking um, for our own context for uh, you know this broader project of, of democratizing at the local level. Um, and something's kind of setting aside the um, power mapping exercises that we developed for this is uh, you know, not just the, the structure of governance of who makes what decisions, what are the power players in your city or region, um, but also push your participants to think through what's the terrain of, of social power in terms of community organizations, um, neighborhood councils. You know, there's all kinds of existing institutions of, of community action um, and you know, neighbor participation in many cities around the country. And we need to have an you know, analysis of those as well. Uh, next slide. Um, and then this is uh, going to be about, the session three is going to be about how we build mass organizations at the neighborhood level that um, can you know, interface with um, that, that landscape of uh, power and authority and you know, building a, a real movement outside of the halls of power. Uh, ne next slide. And then we're going to be um, diving into kind of two main things with our session on assemblies. First is get a sense of what are the, the strategic functions of assemblies. They play different roles um, in different kinds of settings and movements. There are assemblies for, you know, when there's a protest action, and all participants need to figure out what they're going to do. There are assemblies that are, um, you know, different kinds of like emergency response. There are also assemblies that are set up more as uh, enduring institutions that have um, sort of a different role in, in the struggle. And so we just need to think through these um, different kinds of questions. And then lastly, we'll be running through some of the best practices for in terms of procedures, facilitation, how do we uh, run assemblies that, that, that work well, and that are, that are participatory. Next slide. Uh, and then lastly, we're gonna be putting all these pieces together to chart out kind of a plan for the participants in the cohort's own cities, um, learning from some uh, past uh, exercises in doing this, um, unpacking some of the core debates about how we relate to the state, to elected officials, um, are there mechanisms or political pathways for democratizing city governance um, by reforming the city charter or, 
electing slates of um, candidates on a citizens platform or uh, a dual power strategy of you know building new institutions of governance that we can dissolve uh, the city government into. These are the kind of big political questions that um, the municipalist movement has uh, been wrestling with. And we just want to push you all to think of them in terms of your own local context. What opportunities, what difficulties, what challenges, um, what political space do you have to operate in with within? And uh, based on that, um, to develop a, a long-term strategic organizing plan for, for that local context. Um, and then for the final session, uh, Mike's going to be walking us through a practice called Council of Wise Ones, um, which is a uh, a tool for um, getting productive feedback and input and thoughts from a trusted group of people. And we're using this both to uh, kind of weave together some relationships of bouncing ideas off each other, sharing challenges and experiences after we've left the fellowship space while also developing a, a tool and practice that you can use in your own uh, neighborhood or city organizing when it comes to bringing some of these lessons back and thinking through with other people uh, how they apply and, and how you might utilize them. Um, and then over the course of this, we're also going to be uh, collaborating together to put together um, an organizing toolkit so that the things learned in this series aren't just going to be for the small group of people who participate in the cohort, um, but something that we can offer out to the movement more broadly. Um, I, th I think that's it for me. Uh, I think Mike we didn't actually talk about this because this was a new slide. Do you want to talk about the rubric? Yeah. Um, so folks um, would have seen this at the top of the, or, or seen some of these questions show up in, in the application. But this, well, um, but the, the rubric that we have here is just, you know, the way that we're looking at applications, we're trying to really, we, we, we really only have space for, for the 20 slots that we've named. And so we're really trying to build a good mix in the cohort of different people and different experiences who will be looking at things like, you know, just the basis, basics is just the the interest in the fellowship, um, some organizing back experience and background. We we want to try to bring people who have some experiences to draw upon into the fellowship, especially because of some of these lessons and learnings will come out into this organizer toolkit. Uh, we want, you know, folks who, who may have some experience with movement building. Um, some theory and practice of municipalism, we'll be looking for that in some of the application answers. Um, the plan for learning an application is like really peak. It's really important because ultimately that's where a lot of the troubleshooting and the experience building will show up um, in terms of, you know, you testing the, the framework and then um, bringing back the learnings. And then some organizational and political alignment. Um, you know, we are grounded in things like municipalism, like solidarity economy, um, you know, like dual power and such. So th these are these are all sort of um, elements of alignment we're looking for in organizations that are maybe working towards those types of worldviews. And um, and that's going to be another important aspect of the rubric and how we evaluate applications. Okay. Thanks, Mike. You, uh -huh. for Q&A. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, so now this is the opportunity for folks to... Um, ask questions, ask us questions. Uh, so we're gonna do this by region again. Um, again, this cohort fellowship is really targeted towards people in North America. Um, and uh, so if you're outside of North America, we really appreciate your interest, but we just, I think just in terms of like cultural competency, we're really kind of focused on North America. It's also like, where the municipalist movement needs to grow. Uh, so, yes. So uh, let's start with uh, uh, Mexico and the Caribbean. Um, oh, sorry, I can put up the last slide. Do you mean this one or this one? Okay, uh, I am not excluding Puerto Rico, not at all. 
Uh, okay, so let's let's uh, let's see some questions for from uh, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Puerto Rico. Uh, so if you want to just raise your hand, uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, and then uh, yeah, we'll we'll take a bunch of questions from that region. Um, Or you could also just type your question if you're from that region in the chat, if that's if you're more comfortable doing that. Okay, uh, uh, Al Allison, uh, you're you're welcome to unmute yourself, or if you want, I could just read out your question. Um, so. So Allison asked, uh, what time will the sessions be on Saturday? Um, so the sessions will be um, every other Saturday. Uh, and I'm just pulling up the, the. sorry, I'm pulling, I don't know, uh, Mason and Mike, do you guys have it easily uh, handy, the times? I had thought we'd said mid afternoon, but I, I don't have the notes on hand. Um, if you go to the municipalism uh, website, Melissa uh, put it in the chat. Oh, oh, great! Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's it's every other Saturday, um, from five to seven p.m. Eastern. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> Four to six p.m. Central and then two to four Pacific. So it'll be at the same time um, on each Saturday uh, that it takes place. Okay. Um, any other questions from from the from that particular region? Okay, so let's move to uh, the east coast of the United States. Um, uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand. Uh, and you could either ask your question by unmuting yourself, or uh, you could type your question in the chat. Okay, great. So Theron uh, raised their hand. Uh, do you want to ask your question? Yes, thank you. Um, there are plans for future learning series, correct? Because I won't be able to actually attend this one. Yes, there are plans for future uh, uh, cohort programs. Um, this is the very first one. And we also realize like given uh, the limited number of seats that we have available, uh, I mean, clearly like we have 50, 52 people, including us uh, on this call, there, there's gonna be, there's gonna be more interest in it than we have available seats. So we will definitely be offering uh, future programs Uh, are are there other questions from the East Coast? Okay, uh, Manuela, do you want to? Um, okay, great. We're having a bunch of questions. Uh, Manuela, do you want to ask unmute yourself and ask your question? Sure. <clears throat> Hello. Well, I was just wondering if people uh, who live in the same city or land uh, can apply to get there. Yeah, that's a great question. Absolutely. So we are encouraging people actually to apply together as a small group, as a cohort together. So we are thinking that um, two or three people per geographic location will go through the uh, cohort to get, will go through the fellowship together as a group. Um, and so ideally, you know, if you're working on an organizing project, you would be applying for this uh, you know, you would be like planning to go through this um, experience together with a group. Um, also, we the application is designed for individuals to complete. So um, each individual would be completing an application, but you would mention that there are other people that are applying that are part of your group uh, in your application. Amazing, thank you. 
Okay, great. Uh, so, uh, uh, Dilcia, I'm. I apologize if I'm pronoun mispronouncing your name. Would you like to unmute and ask your question? Yes, I will try my best English. Um, I just want to know if 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 I can have the the, the application for the cohort fellowship in Spanish because I am improving my English. And can I have that for fill it out, please? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, and I apologize. I didn't get your email about uh, the need for interpretation for today. I'm so sorry about that. Um, so yes, uh, we can put um, a version of the application online that is um, Spanish. Uh, so we'll do yes. that shortly. Yes, and then obviously okay. you can um, put your responses in in Spanish. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Juji, do you want to ask your question? My question was already asked about, um, are you prioritizing um, folks who have a existing cohort or project that they're working on? Or are you also accepting individuals who don't have um, uh, anyone else ready to uh, I, I don't know, jump off the ship or jump onto the ship <laughs> of, uh, of uh, municipalism. Jump onto the ship of municipalism and off the ship of what we've got. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're definitely prioritizing people that are approaching um, the, the pro their, their, their projects um, as a group. I think that, you know, we recognize that you know, one person, you know, can't do everything in a in a particular location. And so ideally, there would be a number of people in a particular location, advancing a movement on the ground. Uh, so um, if you don't have people that you're currently collaborating with, um, there are people potentially, you know, on this call, for, for instance, on this information session, who might be in your same location, that you could connect with. Uh, um, I think we would, we, we'll also try to do some matchmaking. So if we see that there are people that are in the same location, um, we will connect you together. Thanks. Okay, great. Um, and so uh, there's another question from uh, N. McKellar Crosby. Do you wanna unmute yourself? Sure, sure. And, uh, I was just, I just wanted to ask that I heard before that uh, North America is where municipalism needed to grow. And so I wanted to see, and I apologize for the, no the noise in the background. I'm, I'm currently in London, and it's, everywhere I go, it's just so much going on. Um, but I uh, I wanted to ask, where can we point to current uh, municipalist uh, activity or entities that are in practice right now? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll kick it off and then um, and then pass it to my colleagues if they have uh, some thoughts about that. I I would recommend um, so one of our uh, co-organizers who uh, isn't able to make this information session um, wrote a report actually about um, different instances of uh, radical municipalism in North America. Uh, the the report is called Lay of the Land, um, and it was co-authored by Eleanor, uh, who's one of the uh, curriculum developers and organizers of the Cohort Fellowship, and also Erin. Uh, and I am looking up the URL for the report right now. Um, so I think that, you know, would be potentially uh, a good place to look. I mean, they... They, you know, so there's a lot of groups that practice, you know, are, are doing radical municipalism who may not actually identify themselves as such. So, for instance, here in Los Angeles, the L.A. Tenants Union um, is building a decentralized. Oh, OK, Mason, you already put it in. OK, great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, they're building um, a movement across our city here, for instance. Um, 
I'll pass it to Mason because I, I think that uh, there are probably a lot of instances within symbiosis and also connected to the ISC. Well, I think um, it, it's, it's worth keeping in mind that municipalism as uh, a political approach is a lot more embryonic in the United States than it is in uh, and in Canada than in many other countries. And, um, you know, mo all of the examples of these kinds of radically democratic platforms actually coming to power at the local level, at least I'm familiar with, are either in Europe or Latin America. And so we'll be learning about those contexts, but also trying to think through, like, what um, what structurally or contextually is uh, different for them that we need to keep in mind for kind of adapting this sort of politics to um, to our own settings. Um, if you if you want to you know check in with us later to get some uh, readings or resources about um, particular ones where this has been put into practice on other continents, um, be happy to that, have that discussion too. Um, but the um, the minimum piece by Eleanor and Aaron is also a great place to start. Uh, great, Mike. Did you did you have anything you wanted to share? Uh, people are always asserting their own right to the city, and in wherever the right to the city is being asserted, there's the possibility and the egg of municipalism that can develop. So the point of this fellowship is to explore. It could be, it's not anywhere, or we don't want to call it that. But, you know, ultimately, um, yeah, we, we are, we are um, trying to build on the existing organizing that, that operates here. Sure. Great. All right, uh, Ash, do you wanna uh, do you wanna ask your question? I sorry, I I typed my thank you so much, Yvonne and all the organizers. Thank you for your service. Um, I'm driving, so I apologize if it's loud. But I was just asking in the chat. Um, someone like me who I'm working alongside of community gardens and organizers and trust in, in our city to try to set up a land justice coalition here and i'm coming from the, the aspect of i work as a public servant for our city and have tried to sort of infiltrate municipalist right to city elements in the work that i'm doing and specifically i'm trying to uh, use municipalism as a way to democratize democratize and decommodify land for agriculture and food in our city. So I was just wondering if this is like a space for someone like me where I'm coming as an individual because I don't have any of those other joining this as an individual, like it's it's directly going to impact um, and vice versa the work that I'm actively doing right now to create sharing economies within the infrastructure that I'm building out in our city. So kind of a heady question, wondering if it, this is like a space for me as well as a public servant. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, we, we in our first information session, we also had, um, it was either like a government employee or an elected uh, official who was interested in joining the cohort fellowship as well. Um, I mean, so we, uh, I, I would say maybe Ash, you know, I would, put your location, your geographic location in the chat if you're comfortable doing that. And potentially you could connect with other folks who might be on this call, who might be in your same location. If you're comfortable with that, um, I would say, you know, you should, you should definitely apply. Um, I think, and we could get into this. This is a bigger, also a bigger conversation about you know, um, what is the strategy for the municipalist movement? Is it an inside game or is it, you know, uh, primarily on the outside? Uh, is there a role for people who are embedded within the state or within institutions? Um, I don't like I, I think, you know, we as the curriculum developers, we have varying uh, opinions on that. Um, and I think that's fine. You know, I think that's also sort of describes the state of where the movement is at. You know, it's an ongoing healthy tension that's going on. 
I would definitely urge you to um, apply and then if possible to connect with other people that you are working with uh, in your place because it's very difficult to make change when it's just you know one person. So if there are community gardens, land trusts and grassroots organizations that you are working with, uh, I would talk to them about you know applying together as a group. Uh, Mike and Mason, did you did you want to add anything to that? Well, I think there's there's two distinct elements of Ash's question. One is like, is the kind of work that they're doing um, related to what we're talking about here? And then also, um, would it be you know, appropriate or well suited for them as an individual in local government? Um, and I think the first question is a definitive yes, um, in terms of like you know, decommodification and uh, various forms of community control and ownership, or uh, I think key parts of this sort of like locally rooted um, democratic practice. One of the things that we were talking about um, though last time with respect to the second question um, for people in local government, either as elected officials or part of um, you know the government administration, is the importance of uh, having what they do on the inside be uh, tied to some kind of base of popular power outside of um, outside of local government. And um, I think one of the things that we're going to be unpacking, discussing, of course, this are some of the limitations or, um, or weaknesses of um, you know, strategies that revolve around entering into the state um, by on on its own, and um, and so I, I would just second what Yvonne is saying um, that the kinds of things that we'll be discussing I think will be a lot more useful to people who um, have have some kind of organizing initiative that they have a foot in um, that's rooted in you know in neighborhood or, or in workplaces or other kinds of uh, spaces of the social world that um, that we're trying to build power. Okay, great. Uh, Mike, did you wanna jump in? I'm good, cause I wanted us to pivot regions. Cause- <laughs> uh, Okay, yeah. Bad. I feel like, yeah, we're spending a lot of time. Uh, so uh, I don't know what region you're in Jasmine, but Jasmine asked a question. If we already applied here, but have met folks in here since then, should we reapply or send notes of that? Uh, I would just, uh, I would just reapply, but make a note that you've already applied, and then just add the updated information, just so that we all have everything in one place. Okay, great. So let's move to um, the the sort of the middle of the U.S. Uh, do folks have questions there? Okay, uh, so let's move to the West Coast. I know there was someone earlier who had a, uh, who had a question from the West Coast. Uh, okay, so Gracie, do you want to uh, unmute yourself and ask? And then we'll go to Jay. Sure. Yeah. Hey, everyone. I'm Gracie. Uh, I live here in Nashville. And there's a couple of us on the call that do organizing work with the People's Budget Coalition. And we have some interest here in applying as a group. But we're wondering um, if there's like an upper limit on the number of people who could be in a small group. I'm sure we probably wouldn't have more than like five or six coming like weekly dedicated interest, but other people like in the group interested in receiving our updates, but wondering like what that structure might look like from y'all's end. Yeah, that's a great question. So I think, you know, again, because we have 20 seats total, um, we're, we're probably gonna include two or three people from each location. Um, so, you know, uh, I understand that that's not going to include everyone that might be involved in your organizing project or who might be interested in participating. 
Uh, so this question has come up from before with other people. And so I think what we've recommended in that instance is for you to like internally ident like identify who in your group should represent, you know, your, you know, should go through the cohort fellowship. Um, and then ideally that would be a, a person who is also a good facilitator or people who are good facilitators. And then uh, that, that person could then uh, share what they've learned um, with other folks uh, who are part of their organizing project. And we the the total number of seats are 20 across like the expanse of the geography. Uh, okay, so uh, Allison is is adding to that question. So Allison, do you want to ask that and then we'll go to Jay? Oh, sure. Hi, thanks. Um, just thinking about two to three people, would it be a stronger, more preferable in terms of a stronger team or a stronger application to include like two to three folks from the same organization or uh, from across different organizations? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, uh, it's not something that we have uh, concretely uh that we're using as an evaluation like criteria in our rubric uh i would i'll i'll def i'll see if uh, mike and mason have any thoughts about this well i think it depends um if if this is serving as like a a vector for these different groups to pursue some kind of concrete collaboration on the local level um, having people from different orgs working together on this sounds to me like something that'd be really positive, the, uh, you know, a significant contribution of the program to the local organizing work. Um, but that's kind of depends on the relationship between these different organizations. Yeah. Um, and I would agree. And maybe I would connect this to the question that, I mean, to, the similar questions that were asked earlier about like who should apply. I mean, with 20 people, there's a sort of upper limit. There's an, a, a, an upper limit benefit to the fellows in having everyone concentrated either in a specific region or in a specific organization. At some point, the benefit kind of taps out. And so we're trying to diversify the pool of the 20 folks. So yes, it, I think it would be very compelling if folks in the same region are organizing um, across multiple organizations, that would be a very compelling application to review because it, it strengthens the plan for application and it it strengthens who you can actually work with when you get back to whatever context you're organizing from. So check. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. Okay, Jay, uh, and I apologize again uh, if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly from Portland. Would you like to unmute and ask your question? Sure, and that was pronounced correctly. Um, I'll throw my camera on. So I had a question about the um, the group application. So if you want to apply as a group, does everybody in the group need to apply? And if you know, if um, one person gets into the group or into the um, cohort. Um, Will those other people have, will they be able to have like access to, for example, like resources or the recordings or anything like that? Or is it expected that, you know, the one person's going to kind of teach the others without the explicit access to the cohort materials? That's kind of two questions, I think. Okay. So your first question is, is if a, a cohort of people from a specific location apply um, and if one person gets in, does that mean that automatically the other people would get it? No, the first question was, do they need to each submit their own application or can just one person apply sort of like representing a group of people? Yeah, thank you, thank you, sorry. Yes, everyone needs to apply individually. The The applications are structured as, uh, you know, as uh, an individual completing it, but also, um, like referencing who the other people are that are also going to be applying from the same organizing project. Um, as far as like the materials go, I think, 
we haven't talked about this, but I think it would make sense to have it accessible for folks uh, who are not in the program, but who are connected, you know, to the organizing projects that fellows are involved in. So I would, I would think, yes, we would give access to um, all the people that are affiliated, you know, with, uh, with the fellow, basically. Okay, good. Yeah. Thanks. I don't know, Mason and Mike, do you, do, uh, I don't know if, what your thoughts are, but that would be my first uh, reaction. Well, just thinking like concretely how we distribute any uh, materials for it, we'll send them to the participants. You will have those files. You can take them to, um, you know, your organizing circles or what have you. Um, and, you know, I think we intend to record the sessions as well so people can refer back to those. You'll have access to that. And at the end of the day, the, the main motivation for all this is to have this be this material not just be useful to you individually as a participant but um but a contribution to organizing projects that you're a part of and so you know if it comes up with the courses that there's things that we could be doing to um better serve that goal in terms of like how we share out materials to cohort participants um, I think that's like the kind of adjustments that we want to make because uh, what you're asking about is precisely what we're trying to make happen. Yeah, and it certainly is not our intent to foment dissent or discord in the group. You know, uh, if, if you if if you think that you all might all be applying, sit down and have a conversation about who would be the best person to apply, whose time is best suited to kind of show up to the fellowship in earnest and who would be best suited to kind of disperse information back to the group. Um, ultimately, you know, if you all can decide internally who's going to apply, it makes it easier on us because there are fewer applications for us to review, but also it makes it easier on you because you don't have the chance of like someone getting disappointed because we didn't pick their application. Um, you know, the point is like, let's represent the geographic diversity, the issue diversity, the organizational diversity, and the fellowship can be the space for that. But, you know, again, you know, we are trying to strengthen your organizing efforts back in your local context by what you do in the fellowship. And the fellowship is really the other part is the fellowship is it's a two hour window, right? We've got some office hours in between, but it's like it's really two hours that we're together. And so we have limited capacity. We have limited bandwidth and there's limited things we can do in that container. Um, a lot of what's going to happen is going to happen back where you are. Check. Uh, great. So um, last call for questions from the West Coast of the U.S. Cool. Okay, so let's go to Canada and uh, Alaska. Any questions? Okay. Uh, Zan, do you want to ask your question? Sure. Hi, I'm Zan. Um, I yeah, two questions. So the first one, and when you say um, have a plan to put the learning in practice, do you mean during the course, like in the fall, and you know that practice will inform the zine and toolkit, etc., or does a plan to put the learning in practice in the short term future, but after the class is okay as a, a plan? And the second question is apart from the zine. Will the learning material and class recordings be available online publicly at some point for learning on our own and sharing more widely with our communities or our Facebook friends? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, those are good questions. I would say for the first question, uh, you know, so that all of this stuff takes time. I, you know, I don't, I don't think that it's going to be possible to actually achieve, you know, uh, a solidarity economy and a direct democracy in each of your places in 12 weeks. It would be awesome if it was, <laughs> if it could happen in that timeline, we're not gonna hold you to that. So, you know, obviously like this is gonna take longer. Um, yeah, so after the class is uh, absolutely okay. Uh, and then in terms of the organizing toolkit, uh, it will be publicly available. It'll be something that we are all collectively going to be creating together. Uh, we have also been talking to um, 
the folks that created economics for emancipation. Um, and we really love how they have uh, self-guided modules, um, you know, teaching people about capitalism and uh, alternatives. So it's something that we really would love to also uh, transform the our curriculum into an offering that would just be available for everyone. That's the website Mike just shared for E for E. Uh, so we are also looking for resources to be able to do that. So if folks have any ideas, that would be really helpful. Uh, okay, I'll pass it to uh, Mike and Mason if you wanna add anything to uh, to that response. Well, I would just note that we are treating this as like a pilot run of this program. And we're, uh, you know, it's an experiment. We're going to run through the curriculum that we've developed and do an evaluation of it with everyone who participated at the end. And so I could foresee there being a scenario where after we go through this one time, we come out of it with, you know, a clear sense of these are the things that we need to change to strengthen it, to make it more useful. Um, and so while we want to have things that come out of it that become more widely available, um, I, th I think it's less likely that we would just dump the raw recordings or, or readings or whatever from this first run online. We want to you know, kind of perfect our game here a bit and um, make sure that we're what we're putting out to the world is you know, the most useful um, effective version of uh, of what we're doing. Agree. Okay, cool. Uh, any last questions wherever you're located? And if you don't get to ask your question now, you can always email us at info at municipalism.org uh, and we will we will answer your question there. Uh, okay, great. So we, and this information session is also being recorded. So uh, I will post the recording on the website um, soon after. Um, okay, so I think in terms of next steps, so the deadline for the application is August 18th. Uh, the deadline is before midnight. Uh, and then we will have three weeks to review the applications and we will be notifying people of uh, their selection uh, by September 8th. If you don't get selected, it's not personal. Uh, it's not a judgment on you. It's just that we have a very limited number of seats and we really you know, hope that you will um, stay connected with us and, you know, have an opportunity to learn and create with us in the future. Um, the fellowship begins on September 16th. So I think we talked about the time, but just to say again, it's a two hour session that begins at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central or 2 p.m. Pacific. We meet every other week. Um, and then the weeks that we don't meet, we might include uh, office hours um, and also do work on the toolkit, you know, based on interest and capacity. Um, and then the fellowship ends on December 2nd, which is uh, the, tra the transition to practice session. Um, we are going to uh, have evaluation um, and then share that in mid-December. And then uh, hopefully sometime next year, you know, release the toolkit that we will co-create together. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna pass it to Mike now for one word checkouts. All right, um, let's go ahead and waterfall this thing. Um, so just go ahead and stage a one word checkout about how you're feeling. Um, and if you overflow into three words, we will forgive you. Um, but yeah, just just go ahead and type your, your one word checkout in the chat. You don't have to press enter yet. Um, we'll prep. We'll go by region. So get your feeling stage in the chat, and looking for Mexico and the Caribbean to drop your one word checkouts in the chat. Mexico and the Caribbean. How are you feeling as you leave the space? 
All right. Got gratitude. All right. Mexico and the Caribbean, bring it on. Um, and moving on to Canada. Canada, drop in the chat how you're feeling. One word check out how you are leaving this space informed. All right. Over to solidarity. Boom. Shifting over to the East Coast. East Coast, how are you feeling? Energized, energized, invigorated, excited. Okay, okay, all right. Thoughtful. Shifting over to the Midwest states and the Rockies or, and, and, you know, the mountain folks. So middle U.S., where, where are you at? How are you leaving this space? Uh, all right. Right. Got some ready to roll, solidarity, that is, uh, connected, excited. Over to the West Coast to close us out. West Coast, where you at? How are you leaving the space? Inspired. Excited. Just transition, doubling it up. Okay. All right. And I think I called all of the regions. And if you if for some reason you didn't get to put your word in, you know, where are you at? Fired up, intrigued, real allies. OK, so we are all checked out. We we didn't we didn't necessarily forget about the South. We I just didn't have my regional map so that I could like call out the Southeast specifically. But, you know, thank you from the South. Intrigued, um, invigorated. And uh, yeah, 